Come to church under any circumstance? Sure. I don't hate my father. He's done a lot for the family and I thank him for it. But I wouldn't be lying if it was a career before family for him and that my life revolved around his. He is a pastor and though I am now spiritual by choice, I'm not exactly a Christian. I believe in Jesus but church disgusts me and because he is a pastor, I would never be allowed to skip a day at his church. Have the flu? Go to church. Broke a leg? Go to church. So naturally, I would never make any plans for Sunday. And since I was living under his roof until most recently, I am in my mid-twenties. I sucked it up and attended service. But ever since I became a free mother-loving man, I stopped going to church. I haven't contacted my family. They really didn't try contacting me except to ask me if I were coming to church that week. And naturally, I ignored all text. The text slowly got angrier and angrier, and just a while ago, I got a very angry text from my dad saying that my attendance rate was very low and that I had been embarrassing him. I had been drinking every Saturday night to Sunday morning because freedom is freaking delicious. So I thought, what the heck? I came to church with a contagious virus, a broken limb, so there's absolutely no reason I couldn't attend service drunk, right? So that week, that's exactly what I did. I had been drinking all night and had downed over half a bottle of tequila. I got there early, sat in the front pew smack in the middle of attendance service like a good boy I was. I think that I might have fallen asleep in between and I do have a snoring problem, but hey, can't miss out on church for any reason, right? And oh boy, do I dislike a lot of people at my church. But I'm very honest when I'm drunk, and confronted nearly everybody I had beef with and explained very clearly why I disliked them. And oh boy, did it feel so good. I proved to my dad that I'm a good son and attended service despite being tired, and by opening up about my feelings to other people, I no longer have anything bottled up. Throughout this entire experience, I was very bright, because I'm a happy drunk. I was smiling, laughing, etc., and maybe nobody could really do anything apart from being visibly uncomfortable with my presence. They really have to brighten up though. Kill two birds with one stone. I should start attending service every week now, but my family stopped contacting me. I wonder why. All right, I spent some time trying to figure out exactly what to say behind this one because it touches base on a subject that a lot of people might find a little bit touchy, and I get that. Uh, the first thing I definitely want to say is don't use alcohol or any other type of substance as a crutch in order to get over a situation. Uh, in this particular case, he was utilizing it to get back at his father, who was an overbearing pasture parent, and I have a family member that is like that, and yes, they do put their religion first over their family and it's unfortunate to watch as a person looking in and I've listened to it coming from the people that are in the family so I get what this guy was going through uh, I believe there could have been a better way to have done this I do uh, at the end in my own personal opinion on my observation it just seemed like he ended up looking more like a jerk than getting back at his dad and so I can imagine why his parents and family members are a bit upset at him. There's better ways to handle something like this. Challenge accepted. Never doubt the stubbornness of an obsessive compulsive deli worker. Someone recommended this one might fit better. Not sure, but I thought you might enjoy it anyways. This one is probably a lot more mild compared to other situations, but I thought the whole thing was kind of ironic, so thought I would say. It happened a few years ago when I was working at a grocery store deli. The main part of our job was to use the slicer to cut cold cut meats and cheeses for customers. One day, an older gentleman walked up to the counter and you could just see the bad day he had been having on his face. It looked like someone had kicked his puppy before peeing on his lawn. You know the kind. Anyways, he walks up and asks in a really disgruntled voice, I need exactly .66 pounds of chopped cheddar cheese. In a solid block. And yes, I know you can get it to the exact weight. I don't care. Just get it done. Now, normally, I'd try to be as polite as possible. One thing you're never short on at the deli is rude customers. But something about this guy's attitude kind of twisted something in me in the wrong way. And I thought to myself, you know what? Challenge accepted. Now, if you ever worked in a deli before, something that might not really have crossed your mind before is not all cheeses weigh the same. Some are pretty light. Others are dense and heavy. Normally this isn't a big problem since you weigh as you cut and you can just adjust the thickness of the slices as needed. When it's a solid chunk though, things become a little harder. More so if you have an angry dude waiting on you who looks like he'll tell you to recut the chunk if it's .01 pound off. 
And if they do that, you know you're stuck with that 0 .65, 0 .67 chunk of cheese that you're probably not going to be able to sell and have to either cut it up and mark it down or throw it out. So me being the mildly OCD Asperger kid working in a deli for the past five years, go into full engineer mode. Weighing out the total weight and length of the chub, the term of large block of cheese or meat that is cut into smaller slices, doing the quick calculations on a piece of spare paper, and measuring out the exact size needed to get the weight required before using a knife to chop off the chunk from the end. The mechanical slices were not big enough in order to finally cut, but the total work only took about 45 seconds. I've always been pretty good at math. I put the cheese on a scale, it blinks for a moment as it's weighing and pops up with a beautiful .66 pounds on the dot. Ha <laughs> ha! The older gentleman just looks down at the scale with a frown and squints his eyes, huff like he's disappointed, then grabs his cheese and walks away. Though, as he was walking away, I couldn't help see a slight smile on his face and hear him murmur, Good jab! Overall, I was pretty proud of the work. I still remember that moment years later, even if I couldn't tell you any of the other hundreds of people I'd served. I love this. This is awesome. It's sort of humbling in a way. It wasn't so malicious, more so overdone. I love that he actually worked the math out, got it done, and gave the guy exactly what he wanted. I also learned a new term, chud. Usually that's something you call your friends because they're being dumb. But in the end, I love how this was solved without anyone actually getting mad. And I'm actually surprised someone actually sat down and mathematically math out what the cheese shape and size should be to the exact weight an individual wanted. That's actually pretty impressive to me. I can't do math. As soon as you start introducing the alphabet, I'm gone. I'm gone. Forget sine, cosine, and tangent. I, that, that, I'm lost with all that stuff. You give me shapes, though. It's on. Can you do overtime until we find somebody to replace you? So, this is not my story, but my buddy's. He works in an industrial work without giving too much away. He works a fairly essential position. Without him or someone to replace him, stuff can't exactly happen. He works 12-hour shifts, 7 to 7. Policy is that you can work up to 4 hours overtime after a 12 and no more. So one day, he was working a graveyard shift and it's Friday. His lead hand comes up to him about 5 a.m. and says that his replacement on the next shift called in and asked if he could save for some overtime. The lead hand says he can leave whenever his replacement arrives. My buddy agrees and at 7 a.m. the crew changes over. My friend hears nothing about his replacement so he keeps on keeping on until about 10 a.m. arrives. No replacement comes so he hangs around a bit to see what's going on as 10 a.m. is the cutoff time for overtime. No one says a word. The supervisor greets him and asks how his day's going. The lead hand does the same. It dawns on my friend that everyone's totally forgot that he worked the nights and he was there on overtime. So since the first lead hand said he would be released when the replacement came, he decided to keep working until either he got too tired or someone noticed. He worked a full 12 on top of his 12, and that's a 24-hour shift with half of it being overtime. At 7 p.m., the supervisor comes up to him and says the next guy called in sick, and you guessed it, Asked him to stay for overtime. Buddy wished he could, but he was beaten. Told the supervisor, nah, I just did 24 hours because no one released me. And left. He got called into a few union meetings after that act of malicious compliance. First off, kudos to any individual who can work 24 hours straight without dropping or becoming unhinged. I think in about hour 12, I'd be starting to come unhinged. So I can definitely say through this, it is 100% not his fault. He didn't do anything wrong. He was 100% in the right. Just when you're doing stuff like this, be careful because some companies like to twist this and make it your fault. And it's wrong. Yes, uh, I'm glad he's in a union, which definitely would save him on this particular scenario. I feel that if the managers were communicating better, this man would have been trapped at work for 24 hours. But... Honestly, at any point in time, he could have just walked out, but that is a strong individual to stay there for 24 hours. And then to ask him to stay longer? What's wrong with you? Where's your knowledge of employee placement? At what point in time did anyone look at the schedule and go, why is this guy still here? I look at the schedule all the time at my work. I can't imagine no one saw that. But of course, some factories are pretty big, so you can't keep track of everybody. That's all of the stories today. I definitely want to say out of all of them, I enjoyed the middle one the most with the cheese. I, one, enjoy cheese and can't have it right now. And two, 
I feel that it was more humble than anything. And it was it's good to read a story when it's sort of a happy ending. But I want to know what your favorite story is, so please tell me in the comment section below. And also, if you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that bell icon because... Guess what? If you do, you are that much closer to an ounce of happiness. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you very much for following along. As usual, as always, my friends, stay frosty and keep moving forward.